G'day everyone, I'm your host Stephen and welcome to another episode of the Bamboo History Podcast. Today, we are going to do another Day in the Life episode featuring a unique ancient Chinese occupation. Remember episode 5 about the Geng Fu? Well in DJ Khaled's words, we've got another one in store for you today. Today's occupation is called a Biao Shi, spelt B-I-A-O-S-H-I, and is the equivalent of a modern-day security guard slash armor guard slash courier slash escort. To those who are new to this podcast, I am a Chinese-Australian bloke that got hooked onto Chinese history as a kid and decided to make a podcast out of it. This podcast will feature stories of events, traditions, and intrigues that happened in China back in the day. I also aim to do episodes on the history of China's neighbouring regions as well in the future. I have an Instagram account at Bamboo History Podcast, which has additional historical facts and content too small to fit into a podcast, so please check out my Instagram as well. Lastly, to my existing listeners, my Bamboo Historians, thanks again for following me on this journey. Before I begin, just a quick disclaimer that any characters used in this episode are fictional and are used for audience engagement purposes. Alright now, let's get into the episode. On a warm summer day, on a rocky path on the slope of a Chinese mountain, a young man named Qi was carrying a load of books in his bag. He was on a week-long journey to the capital city to take the palace-level Kerju exam and he hoped that he would turn his life around if he passed his exam, because that meant he would get a good job in the capital city, which meant the money would be rolling in so he could support his family back home in the countryside. Besides all his books and his clothes, he also brought with him some money to use on his journey. Chi was confident that he could pass his exams, and was in good spirits, walking briskly along the mountain edge, when all of a sudden, He heard a noise behind him. Pow! He looked back and saw a group of five to six men, armed with swords and spears, appearing behind him from some bushes. Oh no, Chi thought to himself. He knew he was in trouble. He started to run, but his heavy pack weighs him down and he hasn't really done much cardio before. And the men behind him catch up and then pin him onto the ground. The leader of the bad men grunts, And where do you think you're going, mate? He then orders his men, Search him, and if he has any gold and silver, take it away. Chi begs, No, no, please. I need the money for my journey. Please, I'm going to take the exams. It's for my family. I need this. Please, don't do this. Don't take it. Don't take my money. The leader replies, I don't care about your stupid exams. I just want your money. Ah, yes. Look at all this gold and silver. Ha, 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 ha. This will be plenty for us, don't you think, boys? His men reply, Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, mate, yeah, that's heaps of money. Oh, yeah. Chi is devastated. The men take all his money, then start punching and kicking him until he's bruised all over and bleeding. Then they leave. When they leave, Chi crawls into a fetal position and starts to cry. With no money and injured all over, how is he going to take the test in his condition? Looking at this story, what was Chi's mistake? Chi's mistake is that he didn't hire himself bodyguards to protect him on his journey. This is where, my listeners, the job of the Biao Shi comes in. Biao Shi, translated directly into English, means a master of arms. Shi meaning master and biao meaning arms or weaponry. Biao shi were the ancient Chinese security guards slash escorts, and they originated in the Song Dynasty in the 10th century CE. The Song Dynasty was very wealthy at the time due to its rise in commercial and trade activities. This meant more and more people were travelling across the country carrying money and goods for trade, which also meant there would be people taking advantage of these travellers, such as the bad men that robbed Qi. 
Hence, as a result, this in turn gave rise to the need for people to protect these travellers. And that was when the job of the Biao Shi was born. But I thought to myself, instead of hearing about the Biao Shi from my boring old mouth, I thought it would be best if I did another day in the life interview, like the one I did in episode 5 with the Geng Fu Liang. Today, we will follow a man named Zi, spelt Z-I, who has been a Biao Shi for around three years now, and we will walk with him on one of his jobs. So my listeners, without further ado, let's jump into the world of our Biao Shi Zi. Are you all ready? Three, two, one, let's go! We are now in the city of Yan Cheng, currently in the 1700s Qing Dynasty. It's currently 6am, and there are already sounds of people getting up to start their day. I'm personally very tired right now. I go to Zi's house and I knock on his door to greet him. He asks me what time it is, and I tell him it's 6am. He's like, oh no, and hurriedly gets dressed, joins me on the street and locks his door behind him. He starts walking very fast, and I can't catch up to him. He looks behind at me. Stephen, come on mate, walk faster. We're running behind schedule. The job starts at 7am. We reach a large building, where Z explains are the offices of a Biaoju, B-I-A-O-J-U. What is a Biaoju? Well, Biaojus are basically the companies and agencies that the Biaoshi work for. I ask Z, do all Biaoshi like you work for a Biaoju? Z replies, most of us do. Some work alone, but that's really hard because you don't get to have the networks and resources that the Biaojus have. It's like working for an agency versus working freelance. We make it just in time. Inside the Biaoju, Z apologizes to his boss, who is called a Biao Tou, B I A O T O U, which translates to the head of the Biao Shi. And his boss replies, All good, Z, you made it just in time. The clients for Z's job today are there too, and they are about five to six men, most of them elderly, as well as this one young, handsome looking fellow. Behind them looks to be a horse cart loaded with boxes of all sizes. So I ask Z, what's the job today? Z replies, See that guy in the middle, the the handsome looking fellow? He's been arranged to marry a girl from a village nearby. So they're bringing gifts and money to the girl's family, like a dowry of some sorts. Those other guys are his dad, brother and uncles. The village we're going to today isn't really far. It's only a day's walk. But since these gifts and money are worth a lot, they don't want to risk getting robbed along the way. It's 7am now. The boss for this job, aka the Biao Tou, rounds up Zi and the other Biao Shi, about 10 in total, and gives a short briefing on their job before they take up their posts. Zi's job today is to bring up the rear of the convoy, and within half an hour, we leave the city and head onto a track in the woods towards the village we're going to. I look at all the Biao Shi and all of them, including Zi, all look like they've worked out at the gym way too much. So I start asking them how they became a Biao Shi, and it seems most of them are either from A, families that have always had a tradition of practicing and teaching martial arts, and B, retired soldiers making a living. Z tells me that he used to be a soldier as well, but gave it up because he had to live in army camps the whole time and never had the chance to come home to spend time with his family. He says, I like this job, Stephen, because usually after a job is done, I can get straight home, and the job's usually risk-free compared to being in the army. Risk-free? How come, I ask him. He replies, There's this kind of unspoken rule out here on the road that Biao Shi from reputable Biao Ju are given safe passage. That reputation comes from the leader of our Biao Ju, aka the big boss, my boss's boss because the big boss used his fighting skills to show everyone how good he was at beating up the bad guys and created a name for himself. He's also sort of, you know, made networks with the local bandits and thugs around the area as well. So they know now that, for example, if they see a convoy with our company's flag displayed, then they will stay away. 
Ah, okay. So developing good networks and reputation is important in this job, especially with the local baddies. Yep, Stephen, that's correct, mate. That also explains why it's better to work for a biaoju for a company rather than by yourself. Wow, I thought to myself. That means Z's boss is probably the best fighter in this group today. So I run up to the head of the convoy and approach Z's boss, the Biao Tou. I ask him, are you the best fighter, sir? He looks at me like I'm some sort of lost little kid and he laughs. Ha ha ha, mate, it's not all about the fighting. Yeah, I'm alright with my fighting skills, but in order to be a Biao Shi like us, there's actually three important skills that you need to have. Really? I ask him. What three skills? First, you gotta know how to cook. Sometimes a job takes days, so we have to eat on the road. And if there's no restaurants nearby, we need to make our own food. Second, you need to know how to repair your own shoes. Because all that walking, mate, your shoes get destroyed really quickly. So it's important to know how to patch them up. Then the last skill you need to have is for you to know how to cut your own hair. Hair is a nuisance during these jobs, and sometimes we might walk through really harsh conditions, so washing our hair is impossible, so we might as well cut it off to save the trouble. So yeah, it's not all about fighting, Stephen. But yeah, I think I'm the best out of all of them. Today's job looks to be an easy one, and the clients also look relaxed as well. And there's not much left to go until we reach the village. But then... I see some smoke rise up from the woods, and as we turn a corner, it turns out to be a campfire, and around the campfire are a group of 10 to 15 or so men, chatting and eating. Placed on the rocks next to them are swords, bows and arrows. I tense up. The clients turn pale as well. Oh no, I think these guys are trouble. The campfire men spot us, then peer over to the horse cart carrying the goods and they start talking excitedly. I feel someone put a hand on my shoulder. It's Z. Stephen, stand behind me, he says. His sword is slightly drawn out from its scabbard. I'm scared, nervous, and tense. But deep down, there's a bit of excitement. Because I'm finally seeing some action. This will be good for my podcast listeners. Z's boss, the Biao Tol, however looks really calm in comparison, and takes a few steps to the campfire guys, who all stand up now and walk towards Z's boss. Some of them have also gone to collect their weapons. One of the guys walks forward and yells out, What have you got over there in the horse cart? Z's boss replies, Not your concern. Then he points to the flag sticking out by the side of the horse cart. See that flag? You should know where we're from. Now, let us pass. The guy who walked forward scoffs and says, I don't know you guys and I don't care. That car looks like it's got some really good stuff. If you give us a bit of it, we'll let you go. He reaches for his sword, but before he does so, I hear a loud whack. I was like, whoa, what the hell just happened? It was so quick, I didn't even see that. Within seconds, Z's boss had decked the guy onto the ground, and that guy has fallen and he's writhing in pain. To my surprise, all the other campfire people start laughing. We're all kind of confused now. Then, behind the campfire guys, a huge broad-shouldered man appears. He looks like he's played rugby or NFL football or something. He is laughing too, and clapping at the same time. Z's boss is all of a sudden laughing too, and both him and that football player guy walk up and embrace. Wait, what the heck is going on? They talk for a bit, and then they let us pass. Whilst we walk, Z tells me that the guy that was knocked out was new to that campfire group, and they egged him on to challenge the Biao Shi, and the big guy at the end, the footballer, was their leader. My boss is actually good friends with that guy, so the campfire group knows who we are. It's just the new guy that doesn't know, so they dared him to fight us. But see, Stephen, if it wasn't for us... And if the groom-to-be didn't have us to protect him, he would have lost all his card of goodies for sure to those guys now. We finally arrive at the village and at the bride-to-be's house. 
where Z and his group safely help their clients deliver the goods, and where they'll also stay in the night before returning back to the city the next morning. Z then shows me a bag of silver, which look like little pellets. He explains that as biao shi, they get paid in huo hao, spelt H-U-O-H-A-O, which is basically gold and silver that has been lost as a result of melting larger gold and silver ingots. He says that the whole biao shi group gets 1% of the value of the thing that they're protecting, and then that 1% gets split up. Z remarks, Not a bad day's work, mate. Do you want some? I reply, No, Z, that's fine. We use Australian dollars and crypto where I'm from. Z's confused. <laughs> Australian dollars and crypto? What kind of alien thing is that? So, yeah, that's the day in the life of a biao shi. I tell Z, Hey Z, I'm going now. Thanks for showing me around today. He replies, Yeah, no worries. Do you need an escort home? I could use a bit more extra cash. Haha, <laughs> nice try Z. Good one, mate. See you later. Ah, my listeners, that was fun, wasn't it? I hope Z and his team gave you good insight as to what Biao Shi did for a living. I also wanted to add that there are multiple forms of Biao Shi that would escort different types of goods. For example, there were security guards and escorts for mail, for cash, for gold, for food supplies, for people, and even for things like fish. Haha. <laughs> To become a biao shi, you had to prove to everyone that you had the skill to escort people and goods. So in front of each biao ju, the companies, there was a stage or platform of some sorts, and you had to go on that stage and perform your martial arts routines. If the biao ju company were impressed, then you'd get a job as a biao shi. Then obviously you'd need to know how to cook, how to repair your shoes and cut your hair, like what Z's boss said earlier. The occupation of the biao shi, like most other ancient Chinese jobs, disappeared at the dawn of the modern era, when things such as trains and ships meant people could transport goods with relative ease without needing personal biao shi escorts. I guess the takeaway for this episode is, always be careful when you're out travelling, especially if you've got valuable items. Whilst there aren't many highway robbers these days, especially in developed countries, Always be careful of people such as pickpockets and thugs with pocket knives and thingos that want to mug you. In the end, most of us don't have the money to hire a biao shi to kick their asses for us. Before I go, to help you understand more about biao shi, there are Chinese TV dramas that talk about these people. One example is a show called Long Men Express, Long Men spelt L-O-N-G-M-E-N. Check it out if you want. So that brings an end to another episode. I hope you enjoyed this Day in a Life series, and I'll be sure to post more of these in the future, as there were many jobs that were uniquely Chinese. Please subscribe to my podcast if you liked this content, and follow my Instagram at Bamboo History Podcast for additional historical facts and content too small to fit into a podcast. If you have any comments, feedback, or topic suggestions, please contact me either by Instagram or via my email. Details are in the description box below. But yeah, um, farewell everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening, and I'll see you next time on the Bamboo History Podcast. Bye for now.